Giving is a partnership with God. When we worship Him with what He has blessed us with, we make it possible the expansion of His kingdom in our community. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 You'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. At Lights and Church, we give in the spirit of generosity to God. There is nothing we need that He has not provided. You can participate right now in worshiping God with your substance. This is possible through our Lipana Empesa by goods till number 590631. Thank you for your generosity. John chapter 4 and I'll just read uh, the first the first few verses of the story and uh, the Bible says from verse 1 now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John although Jesus himself did not baptize but only his disciples he left Judah and departed again for Galilee and he had to pass through Samaria I want you to mark that part in verse 4 it says that he had to pass through Samaria so he came to a town of Sy of Samaria called Sychar near the field that Jacob had given his son Joseph Jacob's well was there Let's just stop there for today and just talk about this well, this well, this well that was there. And uh, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray that let your word bring light and life to us as we read and as we speak about you through the scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray and somebody say Amen. Come on, somebody say a bigger, better Amen. Every time Jesus wants to, or Jesus wanted to reveal himself deeply to men, he used individuals. Every encounter that Jesus has with the one, the one person is an important uh, encounter in the life of a believer because it is those incidences that Jesus reveals himself uh, dearly to men. Remember in, in the previous chapter, where we find the, 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 the famous uh, verse that says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That scripture is a revelation that Jesus has with a man that is called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was the teacher in, in, in the synagogue and he comes to Jesus by night and he asks Jesus how can I be saved? Oh, how, how can I enter into the kingdom of God? And uh, Jesus says that unless you be born again, and that conversation goes to a deeper revelation to what Christ came to do on the face of the earth. And if you read the book of John, the book of John reveals Jesus as being God, Jesus being God. So every encounter that Jesus had with this sing this singular, these people, this this one-on-one -on -one relationship or this one-on-one -on -one conversation with this man was a conversation between God and man because Jesus is God. Uh, we we like to say was, but he's still God. He, he never stopped being God. He's always been God. He is God who became man and he came to dwell amongst us. What was the purpose of God coming to dwell among humanity? It was for redemption. It was for redemption. That's why Jesus has interest in talking to individuals. That's why Jesus has a greater interest in relating to individuals. He has, he has that interest to relate with you. He has that interest to relate with me because that is what he came for if you are a sinner and you have been saved by grace then jesus has that interest to relate with you that is the importance of personal relationship 
with this man God Jesus Christ hallelujah so when Jesus sees the 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 importance of going through Samaria not because Samaria was a beautiful land not because of the sceneries of the land but he he knows that there is an individual that he needs to relate with and that person is in Samaria and the the, the Bible gives us or the the history the by the, the church history gives us the 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 the, the the differences that was between the Jews and the Samaritans. In fact, the Jews have had a specific way of dressing that was distinct to the Samaritans. So when a, a Jew passed by your land, you just know that this one is a Jew. The Jew considered the Samaritans unclean. Why? Because they were a mixed race. They were a mixed race. And, and when, when Jesus decided to go through Samaritan, it goes through it, it's 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 like jesus came into the world jesus came into the world he comes amongst the people that were not worthy he comes amongst the people that were considered not clean not not deserving the, the samaritans were not even allowed to go to jerusalem for worship if a, a jew used if a, a samaritan used a cup to drink water a Jew was not supposed to take the same cup and use it because they were considered unclean. Yet Jesus, in his own might as God, he decides to go through this place. You, you remember that in Galilee, in Galilee where he was headed, is 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 a place that his life was already threatened. These guys were threatening to kill him. And in, in that, Jesus still decides to go to Galilee. But he goes through Samaria. He had to go through Samaria. Jesus did not have to come on the face of this earth, but he had to. There are things that Jesus don't have to do, but he has. He will do them because he has to reach an individual. The reason why Jesus comes to this city, it is not because he loved the city. It's because he loved the people or the person that dwelled in this city. If the Bible says that in Samaria, in Samaria there was this city that is called Saika. Saika simply means a place of encounter. It was a place of encounter. It's a place that Jacob decided to dig a well. Why? Because Jacob was a man who had encounters with God. So when he built this well, it's a well that would last for longer. The wells that you build because of encounters with God this well goes for eternity the bible um, i'm told in history that this well is still available though right now they have built a church around the well but this well is still available somewhere in israel and it's it's important for us to come to a place where we pay attention to the encounters of god the encounters of god because where god has encountered us god puts a mon monument in that place and when when god puts a no monument in that place that that monument is not for you it's for a generation to come whenever god encounters whenever you encounter god that the encounter that you have with god is not just for you but it's for generations to come it's for your children and your children's children that is why it's important for us to pay attention to our personal relationship or personal encounters with Jesus Christ. Any prophecy, any word, anything that God does in your life, if God heals you of a disease, it is not for you, but it's for a generation that is going to come after you. And it's important for us to know that this well was, was, was in a place of encounter. And uh, we were talking about more than a well. It was more than a well because it was a place of encounter. It was a place, a meeting place. And uh, when, when we begin to talk about wells, even in the, your locality where you stay, right, like right now here in Africa, wells are known to be a place that produce more than water. It, it's a place of, 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 of socializing. The well, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a continuous flow of water. That is the purpose. The main purpose of the well is to gain water. 
uh, and 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 when when you go around the well you will discover that a well brings a number of activities there are a number of activities that happens by the well the first activity is, is social people just come there to interact people come to meet friends people come to to meet uh, their relatives people come to meet so and so if if you are going to have a meeting with somebody just tell them come by the well tomorrow and the 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 fact that a well was a place of of social socializing it also a place where people used to meet for for prospect uh, so pros, for prospect relationship that will end in the future remember the story of of the servant of most of, of Abraham when Abraham sends him to go and and look for a wife for his son he comes to the well when he gets to the well he prays to God and he says that whoever i ask for water the person who gives me water i know that that is the person that you have appointed for my my uh, my servant son so when he comes to the well he comes and he just approaches a woman and the, the woman don't, does not just feed him water but he feeds also the the camels that he had so this was a place of socializing it was also a place of business people will come and and make business around the well and in 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 the well you got to know that the business was uh, a business that will the, the people will come and sell jewelry people will come and sell stuff around the well because it was a social place it was a business place and when you begin to to look at the well the well becomes more than a well it becomes more than just the water business and if if we are going to look at the well this well particularly we got to look at it beyond the well the bible tells us in jeremiah chapter number uh, 17 verse 13 let me just read it says that oh lord the hope of israel whom, whom is he talking about here he's talking about jesus he's talking about him before he came on the face of the earth whenever you see in the scripture the lord the lord is a, a an address that is given to Jesus before he is incarnated into humanity and uh, that the bible says that o oh lord the hope of israel all that forsake thee shall be ashamed and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the lord the fountain of living water the fountain of living water Jeremiah addresses the Lord he addresses Jesus Christ as the fountain of living water whom they have rejected and when Jesus comes to 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 this place when he comes to Samaria he comes to a people that seemingly the Israelites knew that these guys had rejected their God and when Jesus comes to them he comes he comes to a people that were rebellious a people that were set apart they were not part of the covenant and when jesus comes to us he comes to us as a man that is coming to reunite those who are not part of the covenant we were not part of the covenant and when he comes he the, jeremiah calls him the fountain of living water what is that that is a well a well is a fountain of water and and Jesus is that water Jesus is the water that comes to quench us from every thirst that we have if you read the story Jesus comes to uh, the woman and says that the water that I give which means he has the water he has some water in him that he can provide he says that the water that I give shall become to you a life spring it becomes a, a, a well of life from within it's important for us to know that we have a well within us out of their belly jesus says that they that believe in me out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water within you there is a well 
This well that Jesus visits in this place is an indication or is a representative of what Jesus has done or Jesus can do in the life of a man. When he comes to this well, he comes to this well not just for the well, but he comes to introduce himself as the well. He comes to introduce himself as the well. And today we come to you to introduce to you the well of living water. What does water do? What does water do? In the life of a human being, what does water do? Water comes to quench the thirsts. If you are thirsty, the, 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 what the well or what the water does, the water quenches your well. These guys were living in the desert. And in the desert place, water is scarce. And when Jesus comes to this woman, he knows that this woman has been walking for, this, this man has been walking for a while and he is thirsty and he will need some water. So when Jesus asks for the water, the woman thinks that she can, she can, she can, uh, she can play around the issue of providing for him the water. Every time Jesus comes into your situation, he already knows your life. He already knows you. He already knows that I am the one that can provide this guy what he needs to quench his thirst. He already knows the thirst that you have. And the waters that we are looking for, you see that there are people who are looking for life. They are looking for life. He says that out of, out of you shall flow life giving water jesus is the life giving water people are looking for life but they are not looking they are not they, they don't think that this life is found in the life giving water which is jesus christ which is the well of life we we, we got to know that every thirst that you have can be quenched by an experience with Jesus Christ, by an encounter with Jesus Christ. Every thirst that you have, it doesn't matter what kind of thirst, it doesn't matter what kind of thing that life brings across you, it can be quenched by an experience with this water. The woman says that you don't have anything to draw. How are you going to give me water, yet you have nothing to draw with? Jesus says that I, I am able to give you a life spring out of my belly. There is water. And the water that I give shall be to you a life spring of righteousness. There, there, there are people who are looking for righteousness from everywhere. They are looking for righteousness from everywhere. From the form, from religion. From religion. And, and religion is just the form without the power they don't want they want life but they don't want how that life is attained how do you attain life you attain life by your relationship with jesus christ by your relationship with jesus christ what the water does is quench you for a season but this well this well that jesus is offering is a well that will go for eternity there is a well that will quench you for eternity. The reason why you still go to the places that you go to, the reason why you still do what you do, you behave the way you behave, is because there is a spiritual thirst. And you see, a spiritual thirst always manifests in the flesh. And uh, some, sometimes we try to, 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 to solve our spiritual thirst by our physical experience or by our physical endeavors the things that we do in the outside you got to know that you are a spirit being but you live in a body everything that is going to happen to you has to begin from the spirit man and jesus comes to deal with the spirit he came to deal with our spirit he came to save our spirit so that when you are saved when your soul is saved then your body begin to follow the reason why we are we are the way we are as a country is because we have done what uh, jeremiah is saying that we have forsaken we have forsaken the lord the fountain of living 
water. So we have looked to men to become our fountain of living water. This is more than a well. Jesus Christ is more than a well. He's the well that gives water. He's the well that provides water. This place was, this encounter with this woman was just not what was not just a, a, a usual encounter. This was an encounter that Jesus was introducing himself as the life giving water. He is that life giving water. So that when you go to this well, this well that is Jesus Christ, you will be quenched for eternity. If you are quenched by him, you will never go thirsty again. Even the enemy will know that that one is already quenched. The reason why sometimes the enemy will attack us as believers is because he knows that we are still thirsty. He knows that we are still thirsty. He knows that we are still having those desires. The Bible says that if you walk in the spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. How do you walk in the spirit? First of all, you got to come to the well. You got to come to the well so that this well can quicken your spirit. So have you been to the well? Have you been to this well? Have you been to Jesus Christ? So that he can become that life giving water to you. Are you looking for life in the wrong places? There are people who are looking for life in, in clubs. We are looking for life in in drugs we are looking for life in things that are not wrong friends and wrong relationships but we are forgetting that the well of life is still available this well is still open you can come and draw and drink this well is still available and the well that jesus has provided for us is a well that will never close there is a time that this well will close when when he comes back again but for now, the well is open. You can come in and drink. Are you out there and you are hungry for him? Jesus Christ is the well that is inviting you. When you come to this well, your social life will be sorted. Your business life will be sorted. Everything around you will be sorted. Why? Because you are by the well. Whenever you, become, you come by the well, there is more life and activity that happens around this well. And this well that is Jesus Christ is a well that wants to bring you out of darkness into this life. He wants to bring you out of, of your place of luck and to bring you to a place of plenty. But first of all, you got to come to the well. There is more than a well. It's the life, it's the life giving waters. Are you thirsty? Then come to the well. There is an invitation to the well. It is free. You don't have to pay. You don't have to give anything to access this well. This well is available and this well is Jesus Christ. If you are willing and you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we just want you to pray with us this prayer and begin a walk with him begin to drink you will not be deceived by men when you begin to have this walk with jesus christ just make this simple prayer with us it's not about the prayer but it's about the heart to receive or it's the heart that that yields to this man jesus christ to this god jesus christ it's your heart to yield be yielded to him and accept him as your lord and your savior let's pray jesus I come to you today and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for the work on the cross. And from today, I choose to follow you and to become part of your family. In Jesus' name, and say Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with us, please, we want you to contact us. Uh, there, there, are screen, there, there is a number that's on your screen. We want you to call that number. We want you to send us a message on this link, on YouTube, on Facebook, and just tell us that you have made that decision to follow and to walk with Jesus and to go by this well and drink. And uh, we want you to join us next week as we continue with this. Uh, not, it's more than a well series as we 
look deeper into this encounter that Jesus has with this woman. See you again on Sunday and God bless you.